Hey coach, welcome back to the channel. If you haven't yet, make sure you subscribe to stay up to date with all the latest content that we are putting out. At the moment, we've pretty much got content going out every 48 hours. So make sure you subscribe, stay up to date and don't stay stuck with your business. Now, if you want to get in contact with me personally to talk about your, your business, then there's two ways you can mainly do that. The first one is book a free 15 to 20 minute call with me via the Calendly link in the description of this video. Click on it. It'll take you to my Calendly Air link and you, you'll be able to book a free 15 to 20 minute call when it is convenient to uh, with you and the available times that I have. Now, if you don't want to do that, you can just send me uh, either a WhatsApp to the number in the intro of this video or you can also uh, send me an email to make money coaching sports at gmail.com right so there's no excuses don't stay stuck with your business get in contact with us the, we make it a mission every single day our company to to connect with coaches to help coaches and if we feel you're a good fit okay we do have a coaching program that we do uh, enroll coaches into if we feel though that this is that is that is a good fit for for the coach Okay, so today I want to talk about the seven characteristics of a successful private uh, soccer trainer, right? So if you've watched any of my previous videos, you will know already by now that I specialize more in the soccer niche. Okay, I've been helping one-on-one -on -one coaches, uh, group coaches, right? Essentially private trainers that do either one-on-one -on -one groups, camps, clinics. I help them with their soccer coaching business. So what I have seen, okay, over the last couple of years uh, doing this is there's seven distinct characteristics that all of the, the successful private uh, trainers that I've spoken to, they all have this, right? Now, I myself have a business as well. I'm still coaching uh, full time as well as working uh, within our company, helping helping trainers and coaches with their business. So a lot of these characteristics are ones that I have implemented into my business as well, into my coaching. But these are the ones that essentially the coaches that have six-figure businesses currently all have these seven characteristics, right? So I want you to get a pen and paper, make notes, and implement what I'm about to share with you today. All right, so the first one is they stay focused, okay? Now... Why is focused important, not just as an actual coach, but as a business owner, is because the, the times we live in at the moment, there's so much information out there, right? There's a lot of coaches who live on social media. There's a lot of coaches that watch hours and hours of YouTube. There's a lot of coaches that are just Googling, you know, constantly throughout the day. And what happens is, with so much information, sometimes a confusion can become created uh, with, with, within the coach and within the business as well. All right. So the most successful trainers who I've worked with, who I've consulted with, who I've spoken to, who I've interviewed uh, on our podcast, the ones that are the most focused, most disciplined are the ones that essentially become the most successful. Right, so staying focused is having a plan and seeing through that plan to, to the end without any distractions. Okay, so most coaches have goals. They stay focused on the, those goals and they don't pivot unless they have to. Right, staying focused today is really, really difficult because as I mentioned before, we're, we're throwing so much information constantly at us that sometimes we can get distracted and lose a uh, focus of what we actually want with not just our coaching, but our business as well. Okay, so the first characteristics are they are super, super, super focused. They stay focused and they continue to stay focused until they reach their goals. Now, the second one is be, be relatable. Okay, now when you're out on the field coaching your clients, you have to be relatable to, to the clients you're working with. Now, something that I've 
implemented into, into my business and especially into my coaching is that I like to storytell with, with my clients. So if I'm working with a defensive player, if I'm working with an attacking player, if I'm working with a goalkeeper, for example, uh, I want to be able to relate different scenarios in a game to that client. Okay, so if I'm working with a goalkeeper, I want to be able to storytell a situation where what we're working on will help that goalkeeper in a game. Okay, because if if kids and, and athletes can't picture it in their head, then they won't be able to execute it on, on the field. All right, so you as the coach, you as the trainer, you have to be able to relate what you're coaching, what you're teaching your client whether it be in one-on-one, -on -one, in a one-on-one -on -one setting, whether it be in a small group, an open group, a camp or clinic, whatever you're demonstrating, whatever you're getting your clients to do, you have to be relatable and you have to make sure that that client can relate to that drill or that exercise, that activity, and how they can implement that into a game on the weekend with their team. Right, the third one is walk the walk. OK, and this is this is quite a funny one because a lot of coaches out there like to put a lot of information about how you how to become successful, a successful athlete. You need to speak. You need to be disciplined. You need to be commitment committed. You need to be dedicated. You need to watch what you eat. You need to exercise or train daily. But a lot of those coaches don't actually implement what they're teaching uh, in their own personal life okay so if you're if you're teaching or you're you're coaching a player to become more disciplined to become uh, more more disciplined away from the field uh, to train every single day but you yourself as a coach you're not looking after what you eat you know you're, you're not exercising yourself you're not keeping in shape you're not learning every single day you're not developing as a person then it, it doesn't really work, okay? Because uh, your, your players will be able to suss you out. Your players will be able to notice that, you know what? Coach Leo is telling me to do this. He's telling me to be this specific way, but he's not actually doing it himself, okay? And with social media today, you know, kids do search what you do, all right? Kids will follow you either on your on your social media channels uh, if you've got a youtube channel they'll search you on youtube right they will find ways to try and watch and to see what you are doing and if you aren't following or demonstrating that you're following what you're what you're teaching then ultimately you know that's going to lose trust because you, your players are going to look at you and think Do you know what why is he telling me this when he's not doing it himself but also, it's noticeable, right? If you're eating wrong, if you're not exercising, you're out of shape, you know, you're starting to build a, 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 a huge beer belly, which a lot of coaches out there, unfortunately, do have. Right? Players will see that and they'll think, you know, what's, what's going on, right? He's teaching me to be a specific way. And then he's going out every night. He's eating the wrong things. He's doing things that go against what he's actually coaching, okay? So that's one thing. And then walking the walk is also being able to demonstrate yourself during a session. So if you're coaching and you want to get your athlete to do a, a specific drill, a specific activity in a specific way, you yourself have to, has to be able to demonstrate that to your players. I see so many coaches out there who, you know, they aren't able to demonstrate. Now, there are ways around it. You can get, if, if you work in groups, then you can get someone to demonstrate it for you. But ultimately, I think as a coach, if you're able to demonstrate what you're coaching, then that becomes more respectable in the player or, or the client or the athlete's eyes. Because if you can do it, then they'll be able to do it as well. Okay, so it's, it's, it's ultimately becoming a leader and becoming a role model to the athletes and clients you're working with, right? Fourth one, ask questions. Okay, do you understand what we're working on? How can this help you in a game? 
right? How was your weekend? How was your week? How are you doing at school? Is everything okay? Constantly ask questions, right? The more questions that you ask, the more information you'll be able to gather. And that will also help you with your training sessions and your coaching business. Okay. When I started my business, I wanted to work with the best of the best in my local area. Now, fortunately enough, I did. But what I started to notice is that I wasn't solving a greater problem. Okay. Technically, they were all very good, but it was a I was struggling to try to get those those type of players to the next level because I wasn't solving a, a specific problem to them, right? They were good technically. They had strong mentality. They wanted to play at the next level. They know they knew what they wanted. So for me, it was hard to problem solve. Now, when I started to work with more intermediate beginner players, then that's when I realized, you know what? This is the problem I'm starting to solve, Okay. A lot of those players lack confidence, they lack technique, they lack game knowledge, right? And if I'm coaching them, taking them through my process, then I'm in, I'm going to see better results. And that comes down to asking questions, because when you ask questions and you get information, you'll be able to structure your program in a way that will be able to help athletes and clients a lot better. Now, the fifth one, give your clients accountability homework or homework, however you want to call it, right? The best coaches out there, best trainers that I work with, I speak with, uh, who are part of our Business Accelerator program, all of them give clients homework to do, and it's more accountability homework, right? That homework has to be done and handed in at a specific day. Uh, so they essentially, they give the clients deadlines that that homework needs to be in, right? Now, this could be a video analysis homework. This could be a technical uh, homework. This could be research. You have to go and research a team, a player, right? It could be what, it could be any of those things. But what a lot of coaches do is they get their players to do homework, but then they don't follow up and keep those players accountable for that homework, right? So give you give your clients homework, stay accountable and give them a deadline that they have to get that homework back to you. Treat your business like kids would be at school, right? A teacher sits homework, that player has a specific day that they need to give that homework back in, completed, right? The sixth one is master your communication skills, right? Communication skills is your understanding and also being able to talk in a way where your clients understand what you want them to do, okay? See, so many coaches that are very bad communicators, right? Now, not only do you need to be a good communicator with the players and clients you work with, but you need to be a good communicator with the parents who are essentially your paying customers, okay? So with players, you need to be able to speak to them in a way where you can demonstrate that you are an adult, you are a professional, you're a specialist, and you know what you're talking about. With parents, you need to be able to communicate with them in a way where you can demonstrate leadership, uh, you can demonstrate problem solving, and you demonstrate that you actually genuinely care about them and their child, right? And it goes back to asking questions, seeing how they are, uh, seeing how they're developing, getting feedback from those clients, right? So that is mastering your communication skills, okay? So being able to talk, to communicate, right? And essentially, you know, give that client you the message that you want them to receive so that they can become successful, okay? I see a lot of coaches who... During the training sessions, they use slang words. They use words that are inappropriate, really, for, for a training session. Right? You need to be the leader. You need to be the professional. You need to be the specialist. You need to speak in a way that demonstrates all those, those qualities and characteristics. Okay. Now, the seventh one is educate your athletes and parents. So this goes back to when you bring a client on, into your business, right? 
a lot of coaches, what they do, they just they just stick to the training, right? They stick to the training and they they hope that with the training, their players are going to become more educated and they're going to become better. Now, that is going to happen because if you have a really good training program, you know, your, your clients will get better uh, naturally with more training. But educating parents and athletes is something completely different, right? So educating means showing showing parents why we're doing what we're doing right solving a problem for a parent so if the parent is bringing their child to you and the, you know their child is struggling with their confidence so you need you as the specialist need to demonstrate and educate parents on why their child is struggling with their confidence and why if doing this, this, and this, being part of your program is going to help them to get better uh, in the in the game. Okay, so that's a number of ways that you can educate parents. Right, you can educate parents through workshops, uh, video calls, writing writing books. Right, so selling books to parents is another way of educating. Uh, just having parent and player meetings once a month or once every quarter helps parents and players a lot because you can sit down and have a really personal conversation with both of them to see how how they're both progressing, how they're growing. Right, most coaches don't do that because most coaches can't be bothered to. But if you do, you stay consistent with it and you implement it. Not only will your your trust build with the client you'll become more respected and also you'll, you'll get great results and you'll get great referrals from those clients as well. Okay. So if you need any more help with this, get in contact with me. As I mentioned that before, there's two ways you can do that. You can either book a, a free 15 to 20 minute call with me via Zoom. Jump on Zoom. I can ask you some questions, see where you're at, see where you want to get to. And I can see if we are a good fit to help you. If not, just send me a, a, an email to make money coaching sports at gmail.com and I'll be able to answer all your questions through there. Okay, thank you for watching and make sure you subscribe to our channel. Stay up to date with all our latest content.